Here are some more substitution elimination examples. This first example, I'm given the same molecule reactive with sodium acetate. It undergoes an SN1 reaction to give me this product right here. In the second example, I'm given this molecule reacted with uh, acetic acid. It undergoes an SN1 reaction and gives me this product right here. If you want to know why, I'll show you on the board right now. Okay, now we'll do the same kind of thing for these problems. You guys are probably getting sick of this by this time, but that's okay. Repetition really never hurts anybody, unless it's repetition of someone punching you in the face. Let's take a look at this first problem. Here's my carbon stuck to my leaving group. Is it primary, secondary, or tertiary? There's a carbon to the right, carbon to the left. You can see that's two. Secondary, which means it could be potentially any of the above. I'll write them all down, SN1, E1, SN2, and E2. Now we'll look at our nucleophile slash base. Is it strong or weak? Well, there's of course a sodium here, so I can erase that and think of that as behaving as if there were a negative charge there. <clears throat> you think that might be strong, but it's not because that negative charge can of course resonance delocalize in there, which means that it is a resonance delocalized negative charge. It's slightly a lazy negative charge. It's not a pointy, really, really crazy negative charge, which means that it is weak. Weak starts with a wa sound, which means it's going to be one of the one reactions, either SN1 or E1. So I'll cross off the twos. Now I go to my next question. Is my nucleophile slash base a nucleophile or a base? Now remember, if it's ethanol or larger, it's generally a base. If it's smaller than ethanol, when you draw it on paper at least, it's a nuke. The two exceptions that I pointed out are acetate, this molecule right here, and nucleophiles that are specifically involving nucleophilic sulfur atoms. This guy's acetate, which means even though he looks larger than ethanol when you draw him on paper, he is a nuke. Because he's a nuke, that's going to be an S reaction. I'll cross off my uh, E1 and it will be an SN1. Mechanistically, that means this. The iodide takes off, gives me this carbocation intermediate. The negative charge on my acetate then comes in here, forms a bond, and it gives me this molecule right here. Now note, because this came into carbocation, it can of course come from either side, which means I'm going to get a roughly 50-50 racemic mixture with respect to that stereocenter right there. Now we'll go through the same process with this molecule right here. Once again, it's secondary, so I can write any of the above. Is my nucleophile slash base strong or weak? This one is very weak. It does not have any uh, localized negative charge or even a delocalized negative charge. All it has is lone pairs. Because it's weak, it's going to be a one. And just like the one before, this is acetic acid. Acetic acid is technically larger than ethanol, but I pointed out that acetates act as nucleophiles. They're one of the exceptions. So I'm going to go ahead and go with a, an S reaction. I'll cross off my E1. Mechanistically, something similar kind of eventually happens. However, there's one issue with this molecule, and that is this. This is an acid not a base and certainly not a, a traditional nucleophile that we'd want to see. So what we're going to see occur is lone pairs on this oxygen are going to grab that hydrogen and deprotonate. <clears throat> that transiently gives me this protonated uh, alcohol, which then becomes a very, very good leaving group, <clears throat> and this acetate. Protonated alcohol can walk away, giving me a beautiful carbocation, and then the acetate completely the analogous to the example that I have up here, comes into that uh, positively charged carbon center and gives me the exact same product that I had in the previous example. We're now brought to a series of uh, conceptual substitution and elimination questions. In this first one, it says the rate of an SN1 reaction is first order because of what? The correct answer to this problem is C. Now, if you want to know why, I'll post a link here to an earlier video in which I explained this question in detail. In this question, we're asked which of the following molecules will do an SN1 reaction most quickly? The correct answer here is D. Now, if you want to know why, I'll go ahead and show it to you on the board right now. In this question, we're asked to identify which of these alcohols will undergo an SN1 reaction most quickly. Now in order for an alcohol to even undergo an SN1 reaction, the OH has to be converted into a decent leaving group. That typically occurs by subjecting the OH to uh, acidic conditions. So for example, this OH and this alcohol were to grab a proton, what it would give us is this intermediate. Protonated uh, alcohol is now a very, very good leaving group. This OH2 can walk away giving me this carbocation and water. 
then a nucleophile can come in SN1 style. So this is the SN1 approach that uh, we normally take. And I'll go ahead and draw out a cute little nucleophile. Nucleophile! And he comes in there and, and replaces that OH, in net at least, uh, SN1 style. So this is kind of the way an alcohol would typically go in an SN1 reaction. So you can see by looking at this example that uh, protonating that and then having the H2O walk away gives me a secondary carbocation. Now, what if I did that with this OH? What kind of carbocation would it give me? Well, if that guy walked away, it would give me a positive charge on that carbon. That is a primary carbocation. Primary carbocations, in case you've forgotten, are really, really unstable. They, figuratively speaking, what's the word I'm looking for? Suck. Uh, if I did this, uh, or had this uh, OH over here get protonated and walk away, I'd get the same kind of thing, another primary carbocation. As I pointed out over here, this OH getting protonated and walking away gives me a secondary carbocation right at that position. And this OH, if it were to get protonated and walk away, would give me a tertiary carbocation. Uh, sorry, I'll draw a secondary here. Positive charge right there. This is a tertiary carbocation. Keep in mind that the speed of SN1 reactions depends completely upon how long it takes to form the carbocation. Which of these carbocations is the most stable and hence the one that will form the fastest? It is totally the tertiary carbocation, which means that the correct answer is D. In this question, we're shown this sequence down here and we're asked which of the following uh, steps in this sequence is going to be the rate limiting step of the SN1 reaction. The correct answer is A. Now if you want to know why, I'll show it to you on the board right now. This question asks us which of these steps, mechanistically speaking, is the rate determining step. Now the rate determining step is the slow step. Which of these steps is the slow step? Well, the way it's drawn in the question, the way you'll typically see it on a standardized exam, they'll often write out the mechanism in multiple lines, which I kind of hate because it makes it a little bit I don't know, unclear to me. Here's the full mechanism. Step one, and in fact, I probably should write step one over this arrow. Step one. In step one of this reaction, I've got a bromine stuck to this carbon. The bromine takes off and leaves me this carbocation and a bromide. Now, in case you're freaked out by that, remember this is not a primary carbocation. This is a benzyl carbocation. It's very, very stable. It can resonance to localize through that entire ring. Well, at least it's very stable as far as a carbocation is concerned. At this point, this alcohol comes in here and forms a bond with that positively charged carbon to give this intermediate. This is step two as they've drawn it in the preceding question. Now at step three, presumably another molecule of this alcohol uses a lone pairs from the oxygen to deprotonate this, pump those electrons into that guy, and then give you the final product. So I've got step one, step two, and step three. Which of these step or steps is going to be the rate determining step? What's well, going to be the slowest? Well, which one is that? The slowest step in uh, this type of reaction, this is an SN1 reaction, it actually says that in the question, is going to be formation of the carbocation. Even though you have a relatively stable carbocation, a benzyl carbocation, that is still wicked, wicked, wicked more stable, or uh, more unstable, I mean, than any of the other, well, than this intermediate, and certainly way more unstable than the final product. So if you're talking about drawing an energy diagram of this reaction, I've got step one, starting from down here, going step one, oh, and then I get to this intermediate, which is way up here, and then step two goes down to this intermediate right here, and then I've got it kind of going down to the product. So this first step, step one, is going to be way, way slow because you have to generate a positively charged carbon carbocation. So the hen hence the, the slowest step, the rate determining step, is step one, and the correct answer is A.